All right, let's go, Dolphins. Come on. We need this win. You got the chance. Let's go. All right. Oh, what the? I can't resist making a joke, so I hope you enjoyed the intro. I I'm not going to get into stats on the game. Of course I actually did watch the whole game. Um I wasn't about to put a video out last night. I didn't want to waste any more time on it. I wanted to spend Thanksgiving with the family and enjoy myself and the best way to do that was to put it out of my mind after the game ended and that's what I did. It was a great great evening with my family and friends and we had about 20 soldiers from our our, our local uh, military base here, Fort Wainwright. We had about 20 soldiers come over and have Thanksgiving dinner with us, those that couldn't go home, and it was a good time. I, I, uh, deep, or I, I smoked three turkeys, and everybody got to eat a ton of food. It was a good time. Played some cards. But I'm not really going to get into stats on this game. I mean... I'm not going to really talk too much in detail about the game. We all watched it. And I think you can sense by the the face that I have. I can't really laugh about it too much. <laughs> uh, it, it was pretty, pretty hard to watch. And sure, there were some players that had decent games and, and played decent, but... I think those players that did have decent games, I think the last thing that they would want is for someone to come up to them and said, oh, you had a good game. Like, do you think Tua would appreciate that, would like that, if you walked up to him and said, Tua, you played really good. Your rest of your team played like garbage, but you played well. 350 yards and a couple touchdowns and a 114 passer rating, and I don't think he would, he would, he would care very much for that. I think he would just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. We still lost the freaking game. And I'm, I'm in the same boat. So the players that had good games, we know they did. John U. Smith, H.N. had a decent game. Uh, Tyree Kill had a touchdown, and, you know, not, a, not, a, not invisible in that game. And Waddle had some good catches. And, yeah, everybody had some decent plays. But I, the thing I noticed is most of those things happened in the second half after the game was well out of hand. And, you know, the Dolphins had their chance. They had their chance to... To, to show that they were different, to show some toughness and some mental fortitude, and, and they just didn't have it. They didn't show up ready to play that game. Um, coaching didn't do their job. Um, defensive line and offensive line was the main place where I looked at that game, and I was like, man, they are terrible today. Um, interior defensive line, I wouldn't say was as bad. I think uh, I think Sealer and and Benito Jones had had decent games, and Benito got hurt in the game too, and he still had a decent game. Um, but our edge rushers were trash. Uh, they they didn't they were they were non non involved, uh, just absolute garbage all night. Um, offensive line left to right, every single one of them played like crap. Uh, they got pushed around, they got beaten off the snap. Even our offensive line, who was you know, doing the snapping and control of the ball, they still got beat off the ball. And there's, if you played any level of football, for an offensive line to let the defensive line get the jump on them on the snap is absolutely ridiculous. There's no excuse for it. Um, in fact, there are drills that they beat into your head in a pee wee and high school and even college level, and I'm sure in the pro level too. But I know for a fact in college that was something we trained all the time with was getting off the ball on the snap and learning how to recognize a silent count and still getting off the ball faster than the D-line. Um, I'm just, I, 
it was a crappy game. It was a bad game all around, and and like I said, there wasn't enough good games to make a difference in the game. They were extremely unprepared, um, extremely extremely dirty. Not 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 a clean game. A lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties. Ten penalties for like seventy five or eighty five yards or something like that. Um, I think our cornerbacks didn't play a very good game. Our whole back, our whole defensive back core, all of them. They 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 played a terrible game. And, and the amount of missed tackles in this game. Now, here's the funny part. I think I saw a stat line saying they missed 20 tackles in this game. And I don't know what ESPN is counting as a missed tackle for that stat line, 20 missed tackles. I don't know what they were counting because I watched that game, and halfway through the fourth quarter, I counted 27 missed tackles. So... I think that there was a lot more missed tackles than what they counted. So uh, it's just something that I noticed. And if you're noticing that many tackles, I can't think of the last time that I watched a Dolphins game where they had that many missed tackles. I really can't think of the last time. I know it hasn't happened in the last four or five or six years. <sighs> Not since before Brian Flores, I think, was the last time I remember a game where they had that many missed tackles. And you can't. You can't blame all of this on weather, ladies and gentlemen. I, and I, I want to make sure everybody knows that. And also, I want to clarify. I know that I am supposed to be the optimistic one. I even I proclaim that. I say that I'm always going to be optimistic. I'm always going to pick my team, and I am. Even going forward, I'm still picking my team to win every game. I'm still picking the Dolphins to win out. I'm going to do that. That's how I. That's how I roll. Because not only am I analyzing these games and putting information out on the internet, I'm still a fan. And so I'm still going to be that way. However, I also said that I'm going to call stuff out when I see it as wrong. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the good play and the bad play. I'm not just going to ignore everything bad and be like, yeah, well, they tried. No, they, they, they didn't try in this game, and that's the problem. There was zero effort. Maybe not zero, I guess. I shouldn't over exaggerate I, I guess I shouldn't exaggerate there just wasn't enough effort there wasn't enough uh, preparedness there wasn't enough intensity there wasn't enough fundamentals there just wasn't enough of anything really um, uh, let's see so we're, we're, we're looking at this game and talking about it and like I said I'm not gonna get into all the stats and everything um, I just kind of wanted to acknowledge that I did see what you guys all saw. And I know that there's going to be a lot of things being spouted all over. There already is. All kinds of stuff spouted all over X and Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> and the bottom line is is that, and, and, and I want you guys to try to follow me on this, okay? I know Mike McDaniel had a bad game, but he didn't really call the best game. And, and and that's a that's a problem. And he was the first to admit it. You know, there was plays that I wanted to back. I did not want that call anymore. I wanted to take that back. But it is what it is. The thing about it is, is all these things by themselves wouldn't be enough to lose us the game. But all these things together combined, the missed tackles, the poor play in the backfield, the poor play on the line of scrimmage by our by our offensive linemen, the 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 poor tackling. I mean, it, it's all the penalties, it all just added up and it created this insurmountable hole that our team just could not get out of. Um, like I said, I admit the good things, you know, I do admit that they had 114 yards rushing, but their, their main running back, we held him to, I think 50 something yards, 40 something yards. That's, that's, that's pretty decent. And 114 yards against the number three rushing team in the NFL I was okay with that. What I was not okay with was the tackling after the line of scrimmage. Was I was not okay with the way Jordan Love had all day. Zero sacks. Our edge rushers, like I said, were completely, completely absent from competition. And it was hard to watch. So that's something that we need to think about here as we watch the season go forward. We are now 5-7 five and seven with five games to go. <coughs> Pardon me. Um... Five and seven with five games to go. They need to win out. And I know that there's people on ESPN and, and other YouTubers and some other people saying, oh, they could have a chance at the playoffs if they go nine and eight. I tell you what, I promise you, guarantee you, I'll send you five dollars. 
If we finish nine and eight and we make the playoffs, email me. I'll mail, mail you some money. It ain't happening. Ten and seven, we're gonna need a lot of help. We're gonna need a few teams to to lose three or four games out of their last six, or five, depending on which team it is. That's a lot of games that we're gonna need to lose. Basically, we need a team to go one and four, or two and five, and we need to win out in order to, to make the playoffs. We would need Los Angeles or Denver. We'd need Denver to, to, to go one and, one and four to, to finish. We would need LA to go one and four, or one and five, two and five maybe. We'd need the Steelers to lose out those are the kind of things that we're going to need in order for us to have a chance at making the playoffs. And that's at 10 and 7. 9 and 8 is not going to happen. So, what do we do as Dolphins fans? Well, I still think that the tank thing is stupid. And I think that if your your logic is to start losing games on purpose and we can maybe get the 8th pick overall. Is that 14th overall pick going down to an 8th overall pick? Does that make that much of a difference to you, in your opinion, to where it would be worth compromising our integrity? Because I don't. First of all, you can get a darn good player in the top 14 of, of the league. Top 14 picks. So trying to, to bomb and, and, and lose games on purpose just to get to the number 8 pick is absolutely preposterous. And as I always like to say, completely devoid of intellect. So let's not let's not go down that road. If you want to talk about tanking and stuff, go watch somebody else's YouTube channel because <laughs> it ain't gonna happen here. I'm not talking about it. Um, I'm not talking about the draft till the end of the season. That's how I roll. And and, that, and like I said, once the season ends, then we'll start talking about drafts and all of that stuff and all that off season stuff because it's in my mind that's just as good as an, as a season. I love that off season stuff. I love the combine. I love the draft. I love OTAs. I love. You know, I love training camp. I love that stuff. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch players develop, to see players get picked, and watch them go through training, and then with our team and see them, to see them, the ones that make. The t it's just, it's all fun. I enjoy it. So I'm gonna make videos all throughout the year, obviously, but we're not there. We're in a season. We got five games left. We need to win all five in order to make the playoffs. If we win all five, there's a really good chance we'll make the playoffs. If we lose one more game, it's over. We aren't making the playoffs at 9-8, and eight, barring some kind of major catastrophe across the AFC where multiple teams lose four or five out of their last five or six games. And I just don't see it happening. But I guess never say never, and I won't do that. You know, I'm an optimist. <laughs> um, it was a bad game. And what I would want the team to do is not forget how they feel and not forget what they did but they need to move on from the result. And that, that this is coaching 101. I mean like in my years of coaching Pee Wee and high school football, it was always it's always that game is over. We need to learn lessons from it and we need to move on. The season's too short to sit there and dwell on the games in the past. What would have happened if we would have done this or done this in that game? Leave that for the 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 armchair coaches over there in Twitter land. Um it's not for the players, and so I'm going to keep that same mentality. I'm talking about it here a little bit, and then I'm going to move on. I'm not even going to talk about the stats. I don't want to. <laughs> None of it was that great. And it, the sad part is, is this is one of those games where it truly shows the, the whole reasoning behind the, you know, the phrase, the stats don't matter. Well, usually stats can show the story of a game. This game, the stats do not show the story of the game. If you go look at the stats... The box score for this game, it, it, if you didn't know the score and you didn't watch the game and you just looked at the box score without the score at the top and without showing how many touchdowns were scored, if you just looked at the stats alone, you would say this game was either within one or two points or the Dolphins won. But if you watch the game, not one aspect of this game was won by Miami, let alone the final score. So stats are fun to look at, and they give you an idea as to what's going to happen in a game or in a season or, or in anything like that or with a player's career, but stats don't tell the whole story. 
and sometimes stats are misleading. And in this game, stats are misleading. So I'm not even going to look at it because they don't really reflect the way the game was played, what happened in the game, and what happened for the final score. They don't. Don't believe me? Go look. I'm not going to show them. I'm not even going to bother with the stats. I want to say, like I always do, I mention it all the time on my channel, I really think that Chris Greer needs to be fired. Fire him. Get him out of that position before the season ends and it's time for Chris to start working out what he's going to do with his draft picks. Because this offseason, regardless of what happens in this season, I don't care if something happens where we make the Super Bowl, we still have one of our best drafts coming up. With the most amount of draft picks, we have a lot. And this is not the year that I want Chris Greer in charge of drafts. So please, please, Stephen Ross, please, if you are listening to me, please fire him. Get him gone. We need somebody else in that position, Mr. Ross, even, even if it's you. Work it out with Mike McDaniel and you be the interim GM until you can find someone to do it. I would rather Stephen Ross make these picks for our draft this, this, this offseason than have Chris Greer make the picks. What do I think needs to happen? Well, first of all, I think that in order, regardless of this season, I think what needs to happen is, number one, Chris Greer gets fired. I think, number two, we need to fire the senior citizens. We need to release a lot of these older players, and we need to get younger. I know that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. They go, oh, we got a lot of good players that are in their older age. Yeah, we do. And I'm not saying that they're not good players, but I'm saying is that we need to get rid of them. I know it's hard to accept sometimes, but some of these guys got to go. Some of them are going to retire. Clay's Campbell's probably going to retire. And there's a couple older fellas, like not super old, but like Johnny Smith. I think we should keep Johnny Smith. He's played great. <clears throat> Pardon me. But Jordan Poyer, he's going to probably retire or or we need to let him go. You know, there's a lot of players like that that we just need to move on from and make room for a new wave of younger players. Um, aside from getting young and firing Chris Greer, I really think that a, that, a, that a reload of our defensive backs room needs to happen. Cornerbacks and safeties. We need to clean that up. I do like Jalen Ramsey a lot, and I like Storm Duck, but he's young, and he'll be a lot better next year. Uh, right now I'm of the opinion that we really need to clean out the rest and look elsewhere. The draft for one or two, for sure. And once, let's see how the chips fall, you know. But I do think that a rework of our defensive back room needs to be done. I also think that we need to rework our offensive line, and that's a big one because our offensive line, they do good against lesser and inferior opponents. And, and I'm not going to deny that. And sometimes they do play well. But they have no push. They were just getting smacked around last night. And that made me see it again, you know. And I'd kind of forgotten about it the last few weeks because they were playing decent. And I'll be the first to admit when I screw up and, and kind of let stuff slide. And I was letting the line slide. I kept telling myself, oh, well, they're playing pretty good. Maybe they're turning a corner together. Well, maybe it was more along the lines of they were just playing really bad opponents. Really bad defensive lines not good defenses that our offensive line was playing against because they were trash and it seems like every time I start thinking that our offensive line is doing okay every time this happens so we need to cut out a bunch of our offensive line and start over it can't be any worse it really can't for offensive line play if you're trying to keep a defense at bay for two and a half seconds for Tua to throw the ball the fastest out of any player in the NFL. If you're trying to do that, any offensive lineman will do that most of the time. So there's no sense in keeping the offensive lineman we have. We need to let him go. I do think that Aaron Brewer is doing a good job. He is undersized. And he does, you know, he doesn't have a whole ton of strength, but he does play well. And I think that the rap that he got um, – with the Titans, I think is 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 totally unfair because obviously he's he's been he's been serviceable. Liam Eikenberg, see ya. Robert Jones, see ya. All these guys, just get out of here, go. Teron Armstead's definitely retiring. You know, I do think Paul is going to be a decent player. I think we need to hang on to him and, and continue developing him. 
It's a mess, guys. But we're Dolphins fans, and we've been through it. Someday, we're not going to have to go through this for a while. And I hope that it happens soon, because you, Dolphins fan, do not deserve it. I don't deserve it. You Dolphins content creators don't deserve it. Dolphins media doesn't deserve it. The players, I mean, I try to imagine how they'd feel during all this. And I don't really know. I know that when I would have a crappy game, I would feel pretty pissed off. I wouldn't, I would never get sad. I would just get real upset. And, and usually it would be upset at myself, you know, for whatever I, I had a part in it, you know, if I did. And most of the time, you know, it was everybody losing a game. It's never just one person that loses a game. So I'm trying not to point too many fingers here. Um, but it was a, it was as close to a team loss as we could have gotten. Just, we didn't play well, period. On any any phase of the ball, any phase of the game, we didn't play well. It's hard to accept sometimes, but that's the way it is. The Packers played a better game, and they won. They beat us up. And and thirty-one to nineteen or whatever it was, it doesn't it doesn't show how bad of a game it was for us because of the garbage time scores at the end there and stuff. We made it a little bit more respectable, but if you watch the game, you know the truth. You know the deal. It wasn't good. So I am going to move on from this. I got a couple cool things coming up here. Um, number one, next week I'm going to be doing, at some point next week, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Ace Per Head, Curtis over there at Ace Per Head. Um, if you haven't checked him out, go check him out. It's a, it's, he, he's an awesome YouTube content creator for the Miami Dolphins. He does a fantastic job analyzing all this, this, this game information and talks about it. And he's very honest and respectable. Um, I absolutely love his content. He's been one of those Dolphins cr content creators that I've followed from the beginning. And, and, I, and I respect him a lot. And I get to go be on his show. So that's going to be a good time. Me, little old me with like 160-something subscribers. I get to go be on a... A real content creator show so um, I'll make sure to let everybody know when exactly that's gonna happen as soon as I find out the exact date and time uh, but we're gonna get on there and we're gonna chat about dolphin stuff and maybe some of this this what needs to happen maybe some of this what's gonna happen with the rest of the season all these things I'm, I'm excited to do it and um, hopefully if you if you're not subscribed to him go subscribe to him so that you can watch the stream it'll be a good time um, let's see we have the Jets coming up here, and that's going to be a game. Um, I'm not going to get into it tonight. Uh, I will make a video as we start Jets Week on Monday. Uh, until then, we're going to be we got a full game, uh, a week of games coming up here, and there are those games that we need to look for and hope for losses for certain teams. Now, one way to make this loss completely disappear because this was against an NFC opponent. One way to make this loss completely disappear is if the Chargers lose to Atlanta, if Pittsburgh loses to Cincinnati, if Indianapolis loses to the Patriots, and if Denver loses to Cleveland. Now, Denver's probably not going to lose to Cleveland, and Indy is probably not going to lose to the Patriots. Could it happen? Absolutely. And that's what we should be rooting for. Pittsburgh, I think, is going to lose to Cincinnati. So, And I do think that Atlanta is going to beat the Chargers as well. So if those four teams lose, P Chargers, Pittsburgh, Indy, and Denver, if they lose... This loss didn't happen for us. Because that will actually put us in the same position at the end of this week after we lost our game. And the loss won't affect us at all because it's an NFC opponent for playoff seating if we ever get there. <laughs> so root for those teams to lose here in Week 13 and enjoy the, 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 the slew of football games. Enjoy your weekend. Don't let this ruin your entire weekend. It's not worth it, everybody. We're, we're fans of a team that play a game. Okay? That's what we are. We're fans of a team that play a game. So let's not let it ruin our week, our weekend. Let's talk about it, think about it, then move on from it. Okay? Everybody, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. If you enjoyed what you saw here tonight, if you made it especially to the end of the video, Thank you for that. I appreciate it. 
throw a like down there and tell your friends and have them subscribe it helps out a bunch as i'm trying to grow this out and get this more seen by people it's it's beginning to work a little bit and i'm seeing those views go up a little more and a little more every few days so i do appreciate it thank you so much um everybody have a great weekend Thanks up. Thank you.